SpaceX has just revealed issues with the Raptor vacuum engine feed lines and announced important modifications to address them, which is amazing since we've all been at the edge of our seats awaiting these updates. Meanwhile, on the moon, a rover remains stuck inside the Athena lander despite being fully prepared for deployment. And in orbit, the Cygnus cargo spacecraft failure could lead to major changes in the ISS cargo supply system. Let's dive into all the details on today's episode of Great SpaceX. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a bubble in my throat. Flight 8 is over, and now the focus shifts to Flight 9. One of the most critical tasks ahead is addressing the issues that led to past failures. Among these, engine problems remain a top priority, both for Super Heavy and Starship. While Super Heavy successfully completed its catching attempts, the engine failures on Starship ultimately cut its journey short. To ensure full success in the next flight, SpaceX must drastically improve and upgrade its engines, but before that, it's essential to understand what went wrong. Looking back at the last two flights, engine failures led to unbalanced thrust, causing Starship to lose control and explode. For Flight 7, SpaceX identified the issue as harmonic reactions in the attic compartment, leading to pressure buildup and leaks. SpaceX has already implemented upgrades to address this. However, Flight 8's problem remains under investigation. Fortunately, several analyses have provided insight, with many pointing to issues with the Raptor vacuum engine. During the Flight 8 livestream, orange spots or small fires appeared around the vacuum engine on Ship 34. The fire was likely coming from the regenerative cooling pipes, which are responsible for keeping the engine at an optimal temperature. If these pipes were damaged, the engine's performance could have gradually deteriorated, eventually leading to complete failure. At first, the vacuum engine's problems seemed minor, but they escalated rapidly. The failure of the vacuum engine spread to the sea level engines, which were already experiencing leaks. As more engines shut down, Starship was left with only two working vacuums, making it impossible to maintain stability. The result, loss of control and eventual destruction. The root cause of those initial small fires remains unclear, but many speculate it could be linked to the attic area similar to Flight 7. However, a new hypothesis suggests the issue might be related to Raptor vacuum feed lines. Feed lines are the main system that transports fuel from the tanks to the engines. Each type of fuel, liquid methane and liquid oxygen, has its own dedicated line. This system is inherently complex and prone to risks. Interestingly, the issue seems to become more severe as the liquid oxygen levels decrease. This could explain why it wasn't detected in pre-flight tests where tanks are typically full. Additionally, problems with Starship V2's design might be contributing. Some reports suggest that V2 was built to accommodate three vacuum engines along with additional transfer tubes and aft dome systems. These changes, while improving performance, may have also made the system more vulnerable to fire spread. In summary, the current engine problems may not stem from the Raptors themselves, but rather from external system failures, particularly in the fuel management and feed lines. To prevent future failures, SpaceX may need to conduct additional tests at varying fuel levels to assess their impact on the Raptor engine's feed lines. Additionally, while other design modifications have played a role, the feed line system itself requires major upgrades and reinforcements to ensure stability in upcoming flights. This is why SpaceX has just unveiled an exciting new hiring plan to strengthen its engineering team. The company is currently seeking propulsion system engineers to focus specifically on feed line systems for the Raptor engines on Starship. According to the job posting, these engineers will be responsible for designing, analyzing, and building the critical systems that transport liquid methane and liquid oxygen to the engines through all phases of flight. The job description places a strong emphasis on developing and testing these systems while ensuring their survivability by performing structural analysis of parts and components. Engineers will also be expected to oversee manufacturing, optimize designs for mass production, and troubleshoot any issues that arise during assembly. Additionally, they will play a crucial role in defining operational procedures for feed line systems, covering everything from acceptance testing to in-flight operations. This hiring initiative suggests that SpaceX is not only working on immediate fixes, but also looking ahead to long-term upgrades and optimizations for future Starship missions. 
The company is prioritizing improvements to the very issue that affected the last two flights, where feedline system failures contributed to engine malfunctions. The goal will be to analyze, refine, and reinforce these critical systems to ensure better performance and reliability in future flights. Beyond the core responsibilities, these engineers will be expected to work closely with multiple teams, including those handling fluid dynamics, structural analysis, and manufacturing. The collaboration will be essential in refining the feedline system and making sure it meets the demands of rapid iteration and high flight frequency. Optimizing for efficiency, reducing weight, and ensuring cost effectiveness will also be major factors in the design and production process. With Flight 9 on the horizon, SpaceX is taking decisive steps to address the challenges that emerged in the previous flights. Strengthening the feed line system will be a critical part of improving engine reliability, stabilizing thrust, and ensuring Starship can complete its full flight objectives. The company describes this system as the longest and technically most challenging feed line ever designed in spaceflight history, highlighting just how complex and essential this work will be. As SpaceX ramps up hiring, all eyes will be on how these new engineers contribute to the evolution of Starship. If they can solve these challenges, it'll mark a significant step toward making Starship a fully operational and reusable launch system. Reply, welcome to SpaceX, in the comments to show your support. Then, like this video and subscribe to keep following SpaceX's development journey. Now, let's take a look at the latest update on the situation with the rover trapped inside the Athena Lunar Lander. As you know, the second lunar landing attempt by Intuitive Machines, IM2, was ultimately unsuccessful. The Athena lander tipped over upon landing, leaving it inoperable due to a lack of power. As a result, the mission was cut short, lasting only a day. However, amid that disappointment, an unexpected glimmer of hope emerged when a payload inside the lander, the Mobile Autonomous Prospecting Platform rover, or MAP for short, managed to send back data, proving that it had survived the landing. Lunar Outpost, the company responsible for designing and operating the rover, confirmed this promising update. They stated that their Lunar Voyage 1 MAP rover successfully reached the moon transmitted data during its journey and upon arrival, and was fully prepared for deployment. Unfortunately, despite its readiness, the flipped Athena lander is now blocking its deployment, preventing it from carrying out its intended mission. Lunar Outpost emphasized that their data indicates a map would have been capable of driving on the lunar surface and achieving its mission objectives if the lander had not fallen on its side. The original plan was for MAP to test Nokia's LTE-4G communication system and collect a small sample of lunar regolith, which would have been sold to NASA as part of a broader effort to establish long-term lunar exploration capabilities. While these specific objectives are now in jeopardy, the data gathered from this mission could still prove valuable for future lunar operations. Despite this setback, Lunar Outpost remains committed to future lunar missions. The company is set to collaborate with Intuitive Machines again as it prepares to send the Lunar Voyage 2 rover on the IM-3 mission. Additionally, Lunar Outpost is competing to develop an unpressurized lunar rover for a test mission ahead of Artemis V, which is currently scheduled for 2030. However, before focusing on those future opportunities, the immediate challenge remains, finding a way to free MAP from the lander. If a solution is not found soon, the rover will run out of power and its mission will come to an end. Time is running out, and the team will need to act quickly to salvage whatever they can from this unexpected situation. All eyes are now on Lunar Outpost to see what steps they will take next. Will they find a way to deploy MAP and recover some of its mission objectives? Or will this promising rover be forced to end its journey before it even begins? In any case, let's shift our attention and return to the ISS and discuss the impact of the Cygnus cargo spacecraft issue. On March 5th, NASA announced that it was assessing potential mission impacts related to the next Cygnus spacecraft designated NG-22. This mission was originally scheduled for June, but while the spacecraft was being moved to its launch site, workers discovered an issue with the container for the pressurized cargo module. 
Both NASA and Northrop Grumman are currently evaluating the problem and determining whether it will affect the mission timeline. NG-22 had already faced delays, originally set for launch in February, before being pushed back due to avionics issues with the spacecraft. Now, with this additional problem, further delays are a real possibility, potentially disrupting cargo deliveries to the ISS. If NG-22 is significantly delayed, NASA may have to modify the cargo manifest for the upcoming Dragon CRS-32 mission, scheduled for late April. This could mean removing certain science experiments to make room for food and other essential consumables. However, NASA has not disclosed how many payloads might be removed or what specific replacements are under consideration. Beyond the impact on cargo resupply, the NG-22 issue could also affect crewed missions. The Crew-10 and Crew-9 handover period may be shortened, leading to an earlier-than-planned return of Crew-9 to conserve supplies aboard the ISS. These challenges highlight the crucial role SpaceX continues to play in NASA's ISS operations. If Cygnus faces further delays, NASA may have no choice but to rely even more heavily on SpaceX to maintain station logistics. Now, all eyes are on SpaceX to see how they might step in if needed. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.